Good evening, everybody. Welcome to this evening episode of Pursue 9. And we are live from RML New Delhi via Kolkata. And today we are going to talk about pancreatic, neoplastic, and non neoplastic lesions. And to, with us, we have uh, the Dr. Sunana Misro, who has done her postgraduate from PGI Chandigarh, a PDCC in hepatobiliary system from ILBS. And she's right now as an assistant professor. In, in the Department of Pathology at Atal Bihari <coughs> Vajpayee Institute of Medical Sciences, Dr. RML Hospital, New Delhi. She's got multiple international and national publications to her name. And she has been to China to present a, a very important case on differentiating biliary atresias from idiopathic neonatal hepatitis. <coughs> this was a very good uh, presentation by her in China, which was later published. and. Before I ask her to speak, let me request all of you to please keep your mic muted, your camera off, and please don't share your screen. With this, let me request Dr. Sunana Ma'am, please share your screen and start presenting. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Just press present now. Yes, sir. Your entire screen, and then press in the center and share. Is it visible, sir? Absolutely. Please make your screen full screen, please. Slide show. Yes, sir. Yeah. Fantastic. Please start. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, before I begin, I would like to thank Dr. Nadeem, sir, for giving me the opportunity to present on this platform. And hopefully, I'll be able to do justice to it. I am uh, indebted to my teachers at the PGI Chandigarh who have helped to imbibe a keen interest in learning. And I'm especially grateful to my teachers at GB Panth Hospital, Delhi, Dr. Uh, Professor R.K. Saransar and Dr. Professor Pooja Sakuja, ma'am. Uh, Dr. Saransar has been very kind to share many of his cases, which I will also be presenting today as the talk unfolds. So to give a brief overview of the talk, I'll be con uh, concentrating firstly on the pancreatic cystic neoplasm. This is a, a new entities which have uh, now been increasingly recognized and therefore are important. And uh, then I'll be concentrating on the pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma, the molecular genetics, a little bit about the epidemiology, followed by the non-neoplastic mimics of pancreatic ductal adenocarcinomas and a bit about on autoimmune pancreatitis, the type 1 and type 2 pancreatitis. So uh, before, uh, without wasting any time, uh, I'll also, uh, these are the two papers that are the review articles which I have used for my references along with the fifth edition of WHO. So if we see pancreatic cystic lesions, there is a wide plethora of lesions, the intraductal neoplasms, which have now been recently uh, recognized in the last uh, decade or so. The intraductal papillary mucinous neoplasm, intraductal oncocytic papillary neoplasm, intraductal tubulopapillary neoplasm. Then in the cystic lesions, we have the mucinous cystic neoplasms, serous cystic neoplasms, cystic acinar transformation, the solid pseudopapillary neoplasm or the spens, which is actually a solid tumor which shows a lot of cystic degeneration. So it is uh, classified as a pancreatic cystic lesion on imaging. And then cystic degeneration can be seen in many solid tumors like the cystic pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors, acinar cell carcinomas, and the pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma can also show cystic degeneration. Then we have a number of non-neoplastic cysts, the most common of which is the pseudocyst, which is not a true cyst because it is not lined by epithelium. And then the rarer ones like the lymphoepithelial cysts, the dermoid, epidermoid, lymphangiomas, and so the list goes on. This is a picture of a serous cystic neoplasm. So I'll be discussing each of them in detail. So pancreatic cystic tumors are a heterogeneous group of entities which account for 2 to 10% of all the pancreatic lesions put together. So although this is rare, less than 10%, but now they are constituting an in increasingly important category. And that is because the detection of these in, uh, cysts, uh, cystic lesions, neoplasms, have increased with the advancement in imaging, the endoscopic ultrasound, and improved spatial uh, resolutions of these imaging techniques. The detection rate has increased from 0.7 in the last 20 years to 37%. 
And also important is that most of these are biologically curable. So versus the uh, solid tumors like pancreatic ductal adenocarcinomas, they undergo resection and therefore they are being increasingly seen by pathologists also in the whipples or the median or distal pancreatectomy specimens. This is a schematic representation where we can see how the various cystic neoplasms are there in the pancreas. This is the pancreatic head, which is fit into the uh, C loop of the duodenum, the pancreatic body and the pancreatic tail, which fits snugly into the hilum of the spleen. Uh, so first considering the IPMN, intraductal papillary mucinous neoplasm, it could be of the main duct type or the side branch type. Main duct type, as the name suggests, arises from the main pancreatic duct, whereas the side branch type arises from the side branches of the main pancreatic duct. Now, the main pancreatic duct is most commonly located in the head region. Uh, this a diagram shows it in the body, but actually the most common location is in the head. And it is in direct continuation with the main pancreatic duct, whereas the side branch arises from one of the side branches and it is seen mostly in the uncinate process. These take up around 20% of the pancreatic cystic lesions. Then we have serous cystic neoplasms, which are seen in the neck body region. And uh, this is the most common type, which is the microcystic type. Here we can see there are multiple small cysts, which are less than one centimeter, ranging from 0.1 to one centimeter, multiloculated, giving a honeycomb-like appearance. And there is a central white scar, which is very characteristically seen on imaging also. These also take up approximately 20% of the pancreatic cystic lesions. The mucinous cystic neoplasms, usually seen in the pancreatic body tail region, they are large unilocular cysts, which have very few septations as compared to the serous cystic neoplasm. So usually they are unilocular, smooth, and they're filled with thick, tenacious, mucinous material and take up around 10% of the pancreatic cystic lesions. And this is the pancreatic pseudocyst, which I have included. And uh, although, as I told you, these are not true cysts, but because not lined by epithelium, these are cavitatory lesions which are formed in the pancreatic parenchyma, can extend deeper also, leading to pancreatic periton peritonitis and fistulas because they are rich in the exocrine enzymes with a lot of necrotic debris. So most common are the pancreatic cysts, uh, pseudocysts, which are encountered in clinical practice. Then we can have cystic degeneration of solid tumors, which is not so common. A uh, solid pseudopapillary neoplasia of the pancreas is also seen in the pancreatic body and the tail region. And these are also rare tumors, although they are a very uh, distinct class of tumors, around 5% of the uh, pancreatic cystic lesions. So one by one, I'll be covering each of these lesions. So here, if we see, this is on a cursory glance, all of it looks same. But if we notice carefully, these are towel rolls, which are tan brown in color. And this is a dog breed which belongs to South China, a province in South China called Sharpe, which is very loose skin folds. So this is just an analogy, which I really liked uh, that they are so similar looking on a cursory glance, but yet so different, just like the pancreatic introductal carcinomas that I'll be discussing in the subsequent slides. So first coming to the intraductal papillary mucinous neoplasms. These are grossly visible neoplasms. So therefore, typically more than five millimeter. Usually they are more than one centimeter in size. As I showed you in the previous schematic diagram, they could arise from the main pancreatic duct or one of its side branches. And uh, they are known to be associated uh, with multicentricity because of a field defect. And this is seen in up to 40% of the cases. So if a patient undergoes a pancreatic resection for a head, uh, uh, pancreatic head IPMN may later recur with uh, IPMN and side branch in the pancreatic body or the tail region. So up to 40% cases, there can be multicentricity seen. Elderly population is affected 60 to 70 years. And if associated with an invasive carcinoma, the uh, patient group becomes five years older. Male to female ratio is slightly different in the Eastern countries. In Japan, Korea, it's three to one, much more male pre pre uh, preponderance is seen. In uh, USA, it is almost equal, one is to one. And classically in the main duct IPMNs, there is extrusion of mucin because these are uh, filled with mucinous material, there is extrusion of thick mucinous uh, secretions from the ampulla of beta, which is quite classically seen on endoscopy. Cyst fluid CA levels are raised, 
as it is a mucinous neoplasms usually they are more than 192 nanogram per ml or 200 nanogram per ml ca199 levels are also raised and they may occur in the setting of uh, familial adenomatous polyposis pancreatic carcinomas lynch syndrome or the putz jagger syndrome and they harbor somatic mutations in the keras gene now keras is a group of gtp binding proteins and they are part of the ras raf pathway downstream signaling of this leads to in, uh, increased transcription factors and increased proliferation so the mutation of keras which is present on chromosome 12 the most commonly recognized mutations are glycine to aspartic acid at the codon number 12 or glycine to valine and these are the mutations which are also seen in pancreatic ductal carcinomas which harbor the keras mutation so ipmn is a precursor neoplasm to feed pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma also and these are seen in 60 to 80 percent of the cases the other mutation which is quite specific is the genas mutations now genas are uh, genes which encode for the alpha subunit of the g protein and activating mutations of the genas uh, gene are seen at the codon 201 where the arginine is replaced by histidine these are much more specific and uh, genus mutations are supposed to be seen in 100% of the IPMN showing an intestinal differentiation. RNF43 is seen in 50% of the cases and this is uh, encodes for a ubiquitin ligase en enzyme. So risk of uh, malignant transformation in the main duct IPMN is higher about 38 to 60% as compared to the branch duct type IPMN. If there is overexpression of P53 and loss of SMAD4, that is associated with invasion. As this is seen, overexpression of P53, loss of SMAD4 is seen in ductal adenocarcinoma also. So in IPMNs, it is uncommon, but in context of invasion, it can be seen. This is a gross image where we can see the main pancreatic duct and this common bile duct is also dilated and this intraluminal, this is a large IPMN where we can see this polypoidal mass which is projecting into the lumen of the main pancreatic duct and it is quite glistening because it is uh, rich in mucinous material. On microscopy, we have the main subtypes which are the gastric, intestinal and the pancreatic obliterary. Gastric being most common followed by intestinal, pancreatic obliterary is rarer. And on, uh, we can also see low grade and high grade dysplasia in these. Earlier, it was uh, divided into three tires. Intermediate grade was also there, but now low and intermediate are clubbed as low grade because uh, clinically they do not have much of difference in their prognosis. And uh, gastric type is most common, pancreatic obliterary type is rarer. So on microscopy here, we can see the intestinal type. This is a low power image. And in the intestinal type, they are usually lined by very tall columnar papillary or villus frond like uh, structures architecturally. And this kind of uh, has a semblance to the villus adenomas that are seen in the colorectal region. And this is a higher magnification. Here we can see that these have these pencilate or cigar shaped nuclei, which show stratification, hyperchromatic nuclei, somewhere they reach up to the epices also, and there will be apical mitosis also seen. So in the high grade dysplasia, the gastric type, it is recognized by these basal nuclei, tall columnar cells with lot of mucin, the suprabasal location. Here we can see the gastric foveolar type of epithelium. And the pancreatic obliterary type has this columnar to cuboidal cells. And usually pancreatic obliterary type is associated with high-grade dysplasia. So we can see these architectural abnormalities in the form of micropapillate tufting and dissociated uh, uh, discohesive atypical cells, which are present in the luminal aspect, may be associated with luminal necrotic debris and very pleomorphic and uh, high NC ratio these cells have with hypochromatic blue looking uh, nuclei as compared to the gastric. So again, uh, discussing about the high grade and low grade dysplasia, this is uh, showing low grade dysplasia and so is this. This could also go off as uh, reactive or regenerative atypia. However, there is some amount of nuclear uh, crowding and uh, stratification. 
whereas here we can see there is nuclear enlargement nuclear hyperchromasia and also stratification but if we draw a line along the base of the nuclei they more or less lie along the same line so these two would be low grade dysplasia earlier this would have been put into the intermediate grade dysplasia category but now uh, that category has been removed so this is a high grade dysplasia where we can see these micropapillary architecture and uh, tufting of the epithelial cells with lot of overcrowding and these apical nuclei which are all haphazardly arranged there is no orientation there is complete loss of polarity and many of them show prominent nucleoli and also there are although this is a low power photomicrograph there are certain mitotic figures which can be appreciated this is a better picture and again if i draw a line through the base of the nuclei they are all haphazardly oriented in high grade dysplasia and there is abrupt leomorphism also that we can see this is a very large nucleus which we can see which is uh, discohesive and same here and also within the uh, 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 luminal aspect we can see a lot of discohesive atypical cells and necrotic debris in high grade dysplasia so invasive carcinomas or high grade dysplasia in uh, ipmns can be suspected on imaging when they are larger more than 3 cm in size or they show enhancing mural nodules usually they are hypoechoic but if there is some enhancement with a mural nodule more than 5 mm or the pancreatic duct is dilated with main pancreatic duct is dilated irregular contours are seen more than 5 mm now there are two uh, uh, concepts IPMN can show limited invasion that is the invasive components which are getting detached from the IPMN and they measure less than 2 cm in size there can be multiple foci of invasion but they should be less than 2 cm to 20 mm so that is limited invasion in IPMN although the prognosis is not very good in this also it is around 60% five year survival multifocal ipmn can also show concomitant invasive carcinoma where the invasive carcinoma is separate from the ipmn that is there is no uh, association or rather there is no attachment of the invasive carcinoma it is not coming out of the ipmn but it is a concomitant lesion as i told before that they can be field defects so ipmn can also be associated at another area with concomitant invasive carcinoma and the most common invasive component is of the colloid type which is seen in intestinal ipmns or the tubular or the ductal type which is seen in the gastric and the pancreatic obliterate this is usually how it is seen but not absolute so this is a diagram here we can see this is the pancreatic parenchyma some amount of chronic obstructive pancreatitis in the background because of this um, mass effect and here this is the lesion this is a ipmn within the pancreatic duct and we can see that there are these villus uh, architecture and intestinal type of ipmn and here it is associated with a separate concomitant colloid type of carcinoma where we can see these atypical cell balls which are uh, floating within the mucin pools and this is an ihc uh, photomicrograph where we can see the muck staining muck 2 which uh, denotes the Uh, or highlights the intestinal type of mucin and CDX2, which is the nuclear transcription factor for the intestinal uh, differentiation. Coming to a uh, prognosis, the main duct IPMNs are associated, as I told you previously, sixty uh, or almost sixty percent are associated with the risk of high grade dysplasia or invasive malignancy. And IPMNs with low grade dysplasia potentially curable with a five year survival of hundred percent. However, because of field defect and multi centricity, uh, multi centricity, they are prone to recur also. Associated, if there is invasive carcinoma, they fare poorly, uh, depending on the T stage. It is similar to the pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma. In the colloid type invasion, which I showed previously. is better than the tubular type coming to differential diagnosis the differential diagnosis includes the other intraductal neoplasia like the intraductal tubular papillary neoplasm intraductal oncocytic papillary neoplasm oncocytic was earlier put under the ipmn category however in the fifth edition of who it has been made a separate category because of different molecular genetics the mucinous cystic neoplasms 
Usually they do not have a connection to the pancreatic duct, but if these neoplasms become very large, they can erode into the uh, pancreatic duct uh, and they can uh, clinically mimic an IPMN because of their mucinous contents. However, on microscopy, they have ovarian type, uh, type of stroma. I'll be discussing that further. Retention cysts are usually non-neoplastic unilocular cystic dilatations of the pancreatic ducts which are associated with obstruction. Can be seen in chronic uh, pancreatitis with obstruction due to stone and so on. But they are unilocular cystic dilatations of the pancreatic duct not with mucinous material and do not have mucinous lining epithelium. Panins are usually uh, seen in ducts which are less than 5 mm in size and they predominantly show gastrofoveolar differentiation compared to the intestinal pancreatic obliterate and gastric type which is seen in IPMNs. And the main important point is that the duct size is small but definitely pancreatic uh, pa pa uh, intraepithelial neoplasia or panins can uh, further spread into the larger ducts also where it is very difficult to separate it from the IPMNs. Coming to the next entity that is pancreatic intraductal oncocytic papillary neoplasms. 70% of these arise in the main pancreatic duct in the head of the pancreas. It is more common in females with a mean age of 59 years. And the D and AGB1 PRA-CA fusions have been recently described in these tumors, which are not similar to those seen in IPM. And as we discussed, the KRAS, GNAS, RNF43 mutations. So because of that, they have become a separate entity and not a variant of the IPMNs. And grossly, these are large tan brown friable papillary projections within the cystically dilated pancreatic ducts and they have little intraductal mucin. So here we can see that uh, the DNA GB1 and the PRACA, they are both located on chromosome 19. There is a chimeric fusion which takes place of the exon 1 of DNA GB1 and exon 2 to 20 of PRACA, which leads to this fusion protein leading to an upregulated protein kinase activity and thereby leading to increased transcription, increased proliferation and leading to neoplasia. This can be recognized on the break apart fish. Here, if we see, these are the uh, 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 signals which are normal because we can see both the colors. And here in these areas where we can see only the green color, that is because of the deletion of the PRACA red colored label. This is the gross picture. Uh, this I've taken from the Twitter handle of Dr. Uh, Vikram Deshpande because these are so rare that uh, they are very rarely seen. But this was a very good picture. Here we can see the dilated uh, pancreatic duct and these large cystic uh, cavitatory lesions in the pancreatic ducts with uh, some areas showing these solid uh, mural uh, areas. However, they are not rich in mucin. On microscopy, they show these complex papillary arborizing kind of papillary architecture, which are lined by two to five layers of cells. And uh, these cells have rounded ovoid nuclei, prominent nucleoli and abundant eosinophilic granular cytoplasm, which is rich in mitochondria, giving it the oncocytic appearance. And also some areas you can see goblet cells indicating some amount of intestinal kind of differentiation. So here and here also we can see the goblet cells. And this is a high power picture again to show this extensively uh, eosinophilic oncocytic cytoplasm and focal area showing goblet cell differentiation. Next coming to the intraductal uh, tubulopapillary neoplasms. So IOPMs are usually associated with high grade dysplasia because of their complex architectural pattern. Intraductal tubulopapillary neoplasia, 50% arise in the pancreatic head and 33% can show diffuse involvement of the entire pancreas. And they are slightly more common in females with the mean age of 55 years. And here the uh, genetics involved are the chromatin remodeling genes, the MLL1, 2, 3 and the PI3K pathway, P10 mutations and some of them may also show FGFR2 fusions. Uh, grossly, these are very fleshy tumors which are solid, rubbery masses and uh, they can be seen within the dilated pancreatic duct and they also do not have mucin in them. Microscopically, here we can see that they are almost filling up the pancreatic ducts, these uh, tubule-like uh, structures and here they are back-to-back -back arranged forming a cribriform-like pattern, cribriform-like arrangement and the areas where we can also see intraluminal necrosis. 
so this is also usually associated with high grade dysplasia because of this complex architectural pattern this is again another hyper view where we can see these back to back arranged tubules and uh, we can see intraluminal necrotic debris with very high grade nuclei and little cytoplasm comparing the immunohistochemistry profile of these tumors all these tumors intraductal neoplasia will be positive for ck7 ck8 18 and ck19 that is the ipmns of all three types iopm and i PPN. When we uh, talk about CK20, MAP2, and CDX2, they are seen with the intestinal type of IPMNs and in IOPMNs uh, where they show the goblet cell differentiation. So CK20, MAP2, which is a marker of uh, intestinal type of mucin, and CDX2 are seen in the intestinal IPMN and IOPMN. IOPNs showing the intestinal or the goblet cell differentiation. Pancreatic obliterate type of IPMNs, IOPNs, and ITPNs show MAC1 or EMA expression, and gastric type shows MAC5 AC and MAC6 expression. Uh, now, before I come to the next entity, I would like to discuss a case. This was a case of a 30-year-old female complaints of abdominal pain and abdominal fullness, and there was a large cystic lesion in the tail and the body of the pancreas which was 50 centimeter, 15 centimeter with multiple septations and foci of calcification in the peripheral rim. So grossly, this was a large tumor and they had, uh, it had a few septations and there was a lot of mucinous material within the lumen. On microscopically, we could see on the cystic uh, lesion, there was this uh, mucinous tall columnar epithelium with basal nuclei and this abundant suprabasal mucin. However, in the wall of the cyst showed this typical ovarian type of stroma. Here also we can see it. Some areas showed irregular uh, nuclei with prominent nuclei and large enlargement of the nuclei. And on the PSD alcian blue stain, we can see that these are mucin, not glycogen, because the mucinous material is retained and not diastase sensitive. And they're positive on keratin uh, 7 staining. The uh, lining epithelium is positive. So this was a mucinous cyst adenoma with low-grade dysplasia. Now, mucinous cystic neoplasms are characterized by a unique mesenchymal component or the ovarian type of stroma that is present in the wall of the cyst. And they occur almost exclusively in women, 95% cases, and mean age is 55 years. Can be seen in the body or the tail of the pancreas. Size is usually 5 to 35 centimeters. So very large ones can erode into the pancreatic duct and cause clinically can look like IPMNs, large IPMNs. They uh, are thought to arise from rest of the embryonic uh, ovarian tissue, which has been deposited in the pancreas or the persistent fetal type of periductal mesenchyme. Activating mutations in KRAS or P53 mutations are associated with aggressiveness and progression to high-grade dysplasia and invasive carcinoma, which is the mucinous cyst adenocarcinoma, although they are rarely seen. And usually the cyst adenocarcinomas are seen in larger tumors. They are positive for uh, keratin 7, 8, 18, 19, as we saw in the previous introductory neoplasms, and SMAD4. If there is loss of SMAD4 and positivity, nuclear positivity for P53 and expression of MUC1, it is associated with high grade dysplasia and invasive tumors. Non invasive tumors uh, in uh, mucinous cystic neoplasms, the five year survival prognosis is excellent. And if it is associated with invasive carcinoma, again, the prognosis uh, depends on the size of the invasive component staged according to the staging. So this I have already shown. There are these uh, cystic lesions contain thick tenacious mucinous material, can be unilocular or can show uh, multi uh, septation, less than 10 septa usually. And uh, wall is characterized by this ovarian type of stroma, which will be positive for ER, PR, and inhibin. So just one slide about the management of mucinous cysts. If there are neoplastic mucinous cysts with CA levels of more than 192 or more than 200 IU per ml with abundant mucin on the smears, if an endoscopic ultrasound uh, guided FNA has been done, 
and on radiology is either an IPMN or a mucinous cystic neoplasm. However, if it shows these alarming features like dilated main pancreatic duct, which has irregular contours, more than five millimeter neural enhancing nodules, or on the cytology, if we got discohesive atypical epithelial cells, then a pancreatic resection is done. If the pain pancreatic duct is normal, the size is small with no mural nodules, only mucin with fawning type of pattern on the cytology smears, then patient can be kept on regular follow-up. Uh, before we do the next uh, uh, entity, I would uh, present a case. This is a 64-year-old female who presented with abdominal pain since six months. And on the pancreatic body, this is the ultrasound where you can see this uh, multi-cystic lesion on the pancreatic body. And here also on the contrast enhanced CT, it can be seen this multi-cystic lesion with a central type of enhancing uh, scar. So we got a median pancreatectomy specimen and here we can see these multiple cysts which are large and some of them are very small which are pointed with an arrow also giving a rise to a honeycomb type of appearance. So some of them were larger than one centimeter while most of them were smaller than uh, one centimeter around 0.1 to 0.3 centimeter. And on microscopy, uh, this is a microscopy where we can see the surrounding pancreatic parenchyma, the acinar cells and this cystic lesion. And these uh, lesions uh, were uh, lined by these cuboidal epithelial cells with the uh, pycnotic small nuclei and single layer of cuboidal cells. And this is the PAS stain. Here we can see that they are positive on PS, but they are sensitive to dye stains. So they are uh, indicative of glycogen rich cells. This was a serous cyst adenoma, both macro and microcystic variant. Serous cystic neoplasms are benign epithelial neoplasms which are composed of uniform, small, cuboidal, single layer glycogen rich cells. Most commonly seen in the body and the tail and generally they are solitary. Mean age is 58 years and uh, male to female ratio is 3 is to 1. Serum tumor markers in cystic neoplasms are within neo, uh, normal limits because they do not have mucinous secretions and serous cyst adenocarcinoma is very rare. So the prognosis is very good. They are usually, if resected, uh, uh, the prognosis five-year survival is more than uh, is hundred percent. And surgical resection is therefore curative. And if the small-size tumor is uh, encountered, then follow-up can be done rather than resecting it out. Pathogenesis is unknown. It is thought to have a centroacinar origin, and there is abnormal regulation of the VHL hypoxia inducible factor pathway 90% of the patients with VHL syndrome develop serous cyst adenomas. Grossly we have the microcystic variant which is most common seen in 45% of the cases, macrocystic variant, solid variant and the mixed serous neuroendocrine tumors can also be seen where it is admixed with neuroendocrine components. This is a gross picture of the microcystic variant where we can see the central scar and also this honeycomb-like architecture with very small cysts, which are all less than one centimeter. Macrocystic and microcystic grossly can be differentiated. On microscopy, there is no differentiate, uh, differentiating feature. They are both lined by cuboidal epithelial cells and uh, single layer. And macrocystic usually have cysts which are larger than one centimeter, between one to three centimeter in size. So this is a, a photomicrograph uh, uh, from the WHO. We can see these cysts which are lined by these cuboidal epithelial cells with small nuclei and very benign looking. Some of them may show papillary uh, tufting and papillary folds, but uh, this is not uh, sinister as the lining epithelium is very uh, 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 benign looking cuboidal uh, epithelial, low cuboidal epithelium. and. Uh, these papillary enfoldings are quite commonly seen. This is the solid variant of the serous cyst adenomas. And in the solid variant, uh, if you can see, there are no cystic spaces which are identified and grossly also it is solid. So on gross imaging and um, sometimes on microscopy also, it can be uh, 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 mistaken for a metastasis like a metastatic renal uh, cell carcinoma because we can see these fine, very fine vascular septae or it can be mistaken for a neuroendocrine tumor but if we do the markers for renal cell uh, like Pax8 
or if we do neuroendocrine markers like synaptophysin, chromogranin A, they will be negative. And if we do a simple PA stain, they will all uh, be highlighted because they are glycogen rich cells. So that is how they can be differentiated. But solid variant of serous steadinomas are quite rare. Uh, now we come to the case of a 20 year old female who presented with nausea, vomiting and abdominal pain. All the laboratory investigations and the tumor marker levels were normal. On the CECT, there was a large heterogeneous cystic mass arising from the pancreas, which was around 8 by 9 centimeters. So on microscopy, we saw these uh, papillae-like structures, which are these vascular uh, elements or vascular structures lined by these uh, epithelial cells and uh, there are other areas where the epithelial cells are quite discohesive and these cells have very uh, uh, round to indented nuclei some areas also could show nuclear grooving with very fine chromatin and uh, there are other areas where we could see the solid uh, kind of pattern where there was not much of cystic degeneration and here we could see these high line globules and on the beta catenin IHC when done, they were all showing positivity for beta catenin. So everybody must have guessed this is a solid pseudopapillary neoplasm. Now these are poorly cohesive epithelial cells lacking any specific pancreatic line of differentiation, more commonly seen in the body compared to the uh, or the tail region compared to the head. However, now with increasing incidences, uh, equal numbers are being seen in the pancreatic head also. Females are much more commonly affected and the mean age is young adolescent uh, to uh, young age females. 28 years is the uh, age, mean age, quite young and overexpressed progesterone receptor. Now the origin that is thought either from the pluripatent pancreatic stem cells or from the embryonic ovarian dress which got entrapped in the pancreas during embryogenesis. Now, these are characterized by somatic mutations of the CTN and B1 gene, which is located on chromosome 3. There is uh, uh, the beta catenin because of these mutations avoids the uh, uh, intracytoplasmic phosphorylation and it translocates to the nucleus, which is abnormal translocation by binding to these T cell transcription factors or the leukocyte enhancing binding factors, leading to the activation of the beta catenin pathway with overexpression of P27 and P21. And this leads to increased proliferation, although it is associated with a low proliferative rate. On IHC, there is nuclear expression of beta catenin, uh, often along with E cadherin. Then they also express progesterone receptor, Vimentin, CD56, alpha-1 antitrypsin. CD99 shows a dot-like positivity. And CD117 is seen in 70% of cases, but it is not associated with kit mutations. Synoptophysin and NAC uh, may be positive. So that is a diagnostic pitfall if uh, because it might sometimes be mistaken for the uh, cystic pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors. However, chromogranin A is negative and also they have specific nuclear features like nuclear grooving and uh, uh, also hyaline globules, magenta like matrix and degenerative changes can be seen, lot of cystic degenerative changes and this nuclear expression of beta catenin with the age group of a young adolescent female, it is quite classical for solid pseudopapillary neoplasm. Prognosis is excellent even when there is metastatic disease to the liver or the lymph nodes a metastatectomy can be done and the prognosis is uh, very good, more than 95% as compared to the pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors, so have to be differentiated from that. Uh, in the non-neoplastic cystic lesions, I will be covering pseudocyst. The rest of the cystic lesions are quite rare, like the uh, lymph uh, lymphoepithelial and the dermoid cyst, epidermoid cyst, and they are quite classical uh, on morphology. So pseudocysts are cavity forming lesions in the peripancreatic region. They can be seen in the pancreatic parenchyma extending to the peripancreatic region and it is a non-neoplastic complication of pancreatitis which could be caused by alcoholic, biliary or traumatic acute pancreatitis. And it develops when a focus of peripancreatic fat necrosis is resorbed producing a debris filled cavity or a space which is rich in pancreatic exocrine enzymes. So these are large cavitating lesions. They can cavitate into other organs. They can cavitate and uh, form fistulas or on, into the uh, peritoneal cavity causing pancreatic peritonitis also. 
Uh, myelase levels because they are rich in pancreatic uh, exocrine enzymes are highly raised more than 1000 units per milliliter is very uh, uh, specific for pseudocyst lipase levels are also increased and ca levels are usually low so this is a gross picture of a pancreatic pseudocyst here we can see that this cavitatory lesion has very necrotic and shaggy margins and here uh, on the microscopic corresponding to it, we can see that it is lined by these uh, inflammatory cells and granulation tissue with a lot of uh, proteinaceous cystic debris in, uh, and the walls shows uh, inflammation, rich inflammatory infiltrate. And later on when they resolve, they can form fibrosis and organizing inflammation can be seen rather than a acute granulate, granulation tissue like response. So this table, although it looks quite busy, it just compares the various uh, cystic lesions that we have discussed. Uh, I'll just discuss them in brief again to recapitulate. IPMNs uh, are seen in elderly age group, whereas the uh, and the serocystic neoplasms also, whereas mucinous cystic uh, and uh, pseudocysts are usually seen by 40 to 50 years, and pseudocysts are usually associated with alcoholic pancreatitis. Males are more commonly affected in IPMNs and pseudocysts, while females are more commonly affected in mucinous and serocystic neoplasms. The location, pancreatic head, more common in uh, IPMNs, whereas in the other lesions, it is mostly seen in the body and the tail region. CTMRI, the main duct type shows dilation of the main pancreatic duct and there is extrusion of uh, mucin on endoscopy, whereas the branch duct type shows small grape-like dilatations, sometimes also forming honeycomb-like structures and can show mural nodules. Um, mucinous cystic neoplasms are mic macrocystic with few septations less than 10 in number. Serocystic, the microcystic variants have multiple small 0.2 to 0.3 centimeter sized cysts, uh, which give a honeycomb appearance with a characteristic central scar. And pseudocysts are thick walled anoic unilocular cysts in surrounding chronic pancreatitis, alcoholic pancreatitis may be seen. On cytology, usually colloid-like mucin is obtained in IPMNs. However, if there is hydrate dysplasia because these cells become uh, discohesive, epithelial, uh, atypical epithelial cells may be seen in IPMNs with hydrate dysplasia. Mucinous cystic neoplasm uh, shows mucinous epithelial cells with colloid-like mucin. So similar findings are seen on histopath. However, mucinous cystic neoplasms are characterized by the typical ovarian type stroma in the wall. Serous cystic neoplasm, usually acellular or very thin serous fluid with few cells which may be detached, bland, cuboidal, morphology, glycogen rich. Pseudocysts will show degenerative debris and inflammatory cells and no epithelial cells. So histology is quite classical in IPMNs. There is papillary or undulating lining, three types which we discussed in mucinous cystic neoplasm, mucinous lining with ovarian type of stroma in the wall. Serous cystic neoplasm having glycogen rich cuboidal cells which are uh, sensitive to diastase resistance with PA stain and pseudocysts do not have true epithelial lining, they are lined by the granulation tissue. IPMNs are multifocal usually, uh, MCNs and serous uh, cystic neoplasms uh, are usually unifocal except in uh, VHL syndrome where they can be multifocal. Malignancy uh, risk is raised in IPMNs as compared to the others and pseudocyst is a non-neoplastic cyst. Also molecular analysis of the cyst fluid is done in many centers uh, and here if the uh, KRAS mutations are seen, GNAS together with KRAS is quite specific for uh, IPMNs and uh, P53 mutation for a high grade dysplasia. So these patients will undergo uh, resection and the CA levels are high. Similarly, the CA levels in mucinous cystic neoplasms are high because they are mucin rich and also they show the KRAS mutations and P53 mutation if associated with high grade dysplasia. Serous cystic neoplasms show the VHL mutation if they are associated with the VHL syndrome and none of these mutations will be seen in pseudocysts and the amylase levels will be quite high in the pseudocysts more than 1000 and the pancreas uh, CA levels will be less. So before we uh, start the solid pancreatic tumors, November is the month for pancreatic cancer awareness and uh, three days later on 19th, it is the 
day for pancreatic cancer, November 19th. So pancreatic uh, solid tumors, I'll be discussing pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma. There is a separate class on neuroendocrine tumors of the GI tract. So uh, that will hopefully cover pancreatic also. And as in our cell, uh, carcinoma and pancreaticoblastoma are quite rare and classical. So I'll be concentrating more on pancreatic ductal and its mimic chronic pancreatitis. Pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma and its subtypes are most common, accounting for 90% of the adult pancreatic tumors. And it's the seventh leading cause of cancer deaths worldwide, mean age of uh, 66 years, male to female ratios almost equal. And the five-year survival, as you can see, is very dismal. It's less than 8%. And uh, resectable disease also, it is 15 to 20%. Treatment is usually for the resectable disease, surgical resection, followed by adjuvant chemotherapy or palliative chemotherapy for advanced stages. And imaging, it usually shows a hypoechoic mass with irregular borders. And 60 to 70% arise in the pancreatic head. Now, there are the four main common uh, genetic mutations or the four mountains in the molecular landscape of pancreatic carcinoma, which uh, everybody should uh, know. That is the oncogenic mutation of the KRAS on chromosome 12, which is similar to that seen in the IPMNs. Lotion or the deletion mutations of P53, chromosome 17. Loss of function or deletion of SMAD4 and loss of function of cyclin dependent kinase 2A on chromosome 9. So these are all the tumor suppressor with the loss of function and this is the oncogene which gets activated that is KRAS. Other mutations can be seen somatic mutations in ATML, PALB2, CHECK2, RAD51, epigenetic mutations in the MLL genes, SW1, SNF complex as seen in the ATRTs also and many other tumors. Arid 1A, Smart A4. So these are the other mutations which can be seen. Hereditary syndromes which are associated with the increased risk of pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma include the familial atypical multiple mel uh, melanoma and mole syndrome, putz jagger hereditary pancreatitis. This I'll discuss a bit in detail when I cover coronary pancreatitis. Breast cancers which are uh, familial breast cancer, BRCA mutations and the Lynch syndromes which is characterized by the DNA mismatch repair mutations. So this schematic diagram just shows the different uh, levels of HIT. In KRAS and GNAS mutations, RNF43 mutations are seen in low grade and also in high grade mutation uh, IPMNs. So this is the IPMN to carcinoma pathway. And in the uh, high-grade IPMNs, when the second hit is uh, associated with uh, expression of uh, nuclear P53 with the loss of uh, P53 control and loss of SMAD4, leading to invasive IPMN or invasive carcinoma associated with IPMN. The second is the PANENS, pancreatic intraepithelial neoplasia, which also I'll be discussing subsequently. So low-grade panels followed by high-grade panels, KRAS mutations, cyclin-dependent kinase 2A, and then the final hit is P53 and loss of SPAD4, which leads to pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma. Although loss of SMAD4 is usually seen in around 55 to 60% of ductal adenocarcinomas. Oh, sorry. Now, there are some changes between the 7th and 8th edition of uh, the staging, AJCC cancer staging. And here we can see that mostly it is with respect to the T1 stage, T2 and T3 stage. They are further subdivided. T1 is less than equal to 2 cm, but T1A, the tumors are less than equal to 0.5 cm. T1B is between 0.5 and 1 cm, but T1C is between 1 to 2 cm. So earlier, this division was not there in the seventh edition. Similarly, T2 tumors are more than two centimeters and less than equal to four centimeters in greatest dimension. And earlier, it was tumor limited to the pancreas, but more than two centimeters. But here now we have the size criteria. And T3 tumors are more than four centimeters. So this is the uh, new AJCC, which has changes. And node status has also changed in the new staging uh, manual. N0 is equal to no positive nodes, N1 is 1 to 3, and N2 is 4 or more positive nodes. At least 12 regional lymph nodes have to be analyzed. And earlier in the 7th edition, it was either no nodes or N1 being positive regional lymph nodes. 
So now they have seen that this prognostication can be done better when it has been divided into stages of N0, N1 and N2. Assessment of all resection margins in the pancreatic or duodenectomy specimens are required and resection margin with tumor cells at or within one millimeter also is considered positive resection margin. So panins are the pancreatic intraepithelial neoplasia, which are microscopic, usually less than five millimeter, flat, could be mi uh, micropapillary, non-invasive and confined to the pancreatic ducts. Usually they are multifocal. Cannot be detected on preoperative imaging, but uh, in certain patients which have the familial uh, associations with pancreatic cancers, when screening was done, it was seen that high-grade panins are associated with lobulocentric atrophy also because of the obstructive kind of changes. So they started being dis uh, detected on pre-op imaging also, especially in cases with familial predisposition, uh, familial predisposition to pancreatic cancer. Two tire grading is done. It's either low or high grade dysplasia. Intermediate panin two lesions have been removed. High grade dysplasia is the panin, uh, which is known as uh, carcinoma in situ. It is a surrogate marker for malignancy elsewhere in the pancreas. So if we see only high grade panin, need to take more sections to look for malignancy elsewhere. Uh, this picture shows a pancreatic duct, a small pancreatic duct with low grade panin. Here we can see again the basal type of nuclei with lot of uh, supra basal mucin and they show gastric foveolar type of differentiation. And high grade panin again, we see that it is quite blue appearing with a micropapillary uh, cell tufts and a detachment and a very high NC ratio with atypical irregular nuclei. Differential diagnosis for panins, as I discussed previously in IPMNs, are IPMN usually more than one centimeter and can have various types of differentiation. However, in high grade lesions, it's very difficult uh, to identify and also especially when panin involves larger ducts. Now, another differential diagnosis is ductal cancerization. Ductal cancerization is involvement of the duct by the pancreatic tumor itself and not, an uh, not a precursor neoplasm. So here we would see abrupt transition from morphologically normal to a markedly atypical epithelium, rather than a uniform type of lesion which is seen in panel. And also sometimes we can see continuity of the intraductal component with the invasive component. So we can see actually the invasive component going into the intraductal component. Uh, this is a picture which shows ductal cancerization on the low part, but uh, here it is better seen on the high part. Here we can see this uh, cuboidal epithelial cells and this uh, dotted line demarcates the abrupt transition. And sometimes we can see can cancer cells in the stroma which go and infiltrate into the duct. So it might be associated with uh, invasive component right next to it with abrupt transition between normal and abnormal or atypical looking epithelium will point more towards ductal cancerization. So in a Whipple specimen, the multiple margins that are, uh, have to be taken, uh, the pyloric, uh, proximal pyloric margin, the distal duodenal margin, and the CBD margin, if the cystic duct, gallbladder is included in the cystic duct, and also in the pancreatic margins, we have to take uh, the uh, retro retroperitoneal or the uncinate margin, the pancreatic neck margin where it has been uh, resected out from the, uh, uh, transected from the uh, pancreas, the uh, mesentric vessels, the margin of the mesentric vessels and the anterior and po uh, posterior pancreatic surfaces, which are not uh, actual margins because they are cirrhosal covered. And after painting in different inks, we can either bread loaf the tumor so that we can actually see uh, the uh, exact location with, with, of the tumor with the different margins. Or after taking shaved margin, you can bivalve the tumor. And microscopically, this is a very well differentiated tumor, which is showing very benign looking glands. And this is a bit moderately differentiated. We can see this uh, glands are broken down haphazard with irregular uh, contours and intraluminal necrotic debris. And this is an undifferentiated high-grade malignancy with stromal osteoclastic giant cells. P53 positivity can be seen, nuclear P53 around 60 to 70% cases and loss of SMAD4 can be seen in around 55 to 60% cases. 
uh, the morphologic features of uh, pancreatic ductal carcinoma i will discuss in details when i discuss the uh, mimics of the uh, pancreatic carcinoma histologic subtypes there are numerous histological subtypes now recognized in who adenosquamous where more than uh, uh, 30% squamous component or it could be squamous cell carcinoma if there is no squamous uh, component colloid carcinoma where more than 80% of the tumor is uh, suspended in extracellular mucin usually associated with intestinal types of ipmns and are positive for uh, muc2 and cdx2 five year survival is better in colloid carcinoma compared to the other variants hepatoid carcinoma which shows features of hepatocellular differentiation micropapillary has a very poor prognosis shows micropapillary pattern with uh, these cell balls with showing reverse polarity which can be highlighted on uh, ema stain medullary carcinoma signet ring carcinoma and the undifferentiated carcinoma with osteoclast like giant cells so these have been very well described in who with images that is why i have not uh, really uh, put a lot of images of these we will now come to the non neoplastic mimickers of pancreatic neoplasms uh, and there are lot of reference articles but these two are in archives of uh, pathology and uh, lab medicine free uh, to access which are a uh, very good reference articles by the stalwarts in uh, pancreatic pathology non neoplastic mimickers of uh, pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma most common would be the pancreatic uh, chronic pancreatitis which is uh, characterized by chronic inflammation pancreatic fibrosis acinar atrophy duct dilatation and obstruction alcoholic pancreatitis hereditary pancreatitis autoimmune pancreatitis obstructive and paraduodenal or groove pancreatitis so here we can see two images which look quite similar but this is a picture of a chronic alcoholic pancreatitis where we can see irregular uh, scarring of the pancreatic parenchyma which is forming almost a mass like lesion but of the intra pancreatic bile duct there is a tapering kind of stenosis here we can see that it is kind of getting narrowed and tapered down with lot of pank uh, biliary calculi and this is a mass lesion this is a pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma which is a solid mass lesion in the pancreatic head which causes abrupt uh, duct stenosis which can be seen as a subtle feature on imaging also on microscopy the most important is the low par uh, view on the low par chronic pancreatitis although there are a lot of fibrosis lot of irregularity in the duct it still maintains a lobular arrangement and here we can see the ck7 stain which highlights this lobular arrangement of the uh, pancreatic uh, ducts and the acini most of the acini are lost and the others are showing ductal transformation the ducto acinar complexes are seen in uh, uh, advanced chronic pancreatitis which can mimic adenocarcinoma because they become very irregular and uh, 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 within the uh, pancreatic mesenchyme but here we can see that there is the intralobular interlobular stroma which gives it this circumscribed or uh, lobulocentric appearance and this can also be uh, better visualized in this ck7 stain many of the acinar cells are showing ductal metaplasia then another important feature in chronic alcoholic pancreatitis specifically is the presence of these thick eosinophilic or uh, proteinaceous concretions which are present within the pancreatic ducts and also there is a necrosis fibrosis theory so many times we see a lot of areas of fat necrosis in the surrounding areas which will then undergo resolution calcification and fibrosis eventually so if we see these areas of fat necrosis lobulocentric uh, uh, appearance and thick proteinaceous plugs rather than mucin then it is uh, features which point towards chronic pancreatitis another important thing is that with acinar atrophy islets also get lost however or uh, destroyed however islets are not as much destroyed as the pancreatic acinar cells so they uh, remain and sometimes may form these neuroendocrine like micronodules which can simulate a neuroendocrine tumor but these are proper uh, and uh, pancreatic islets which have the well uh, orientation of the pancreatic uh, cells the alpha beta uh, and the somatostatin cells and sometimes they can wrap themselves around nerve bundles as shown in this arrow 
So this is just wrapping of the islets around nerve bundles, not perineural invasion, which I show subsequently, which is quite classic in uh, ductal adenocarcinoma. And if there is a doubt, then in a smaller nodule, EMA stain can be done, which can show that it is just wrapping around the nerve, not perineural invasion or synaptophysin, which will point to the nature of the cell that it, it is uh, uh, endocrine cell, not an uh, epithelial ductal adenocarcinoma cell. Another uh, thing is this is also showing the ducto SNR uh, complex. This is the pancreatic duct with a lot of uh, SNR atrophy and the remnants of the hypertrophic islets. This is a case which shows a lot of uh, obstructive pancreatitis because it is associated with multifocal IPMN. These are the foci of IPMN and here around the areas there is on the low part we can see obstructive pancreatitis. We can still see the lobular arrangement with lots of fibrosis. And in alcoholic pancreatitis there might be squamous metaplasia of the larger pancreatic ducts as is seen in this picture. Ductal adenocarcinoma, in contrast, here we can see there is no lobular arrangement. These are all irregular, haphazardly arranged uh, uh, ducts or glands, which are infiltrating into the interlobular, within the intralobular, no lobular arrangement. Second point that is important is if it is associated with panin lesions, then we can uh, have to look for uh, ductal adenocarcinoma. This is perineural invasion where it is infiltrating into the nerve bundle rather than just impinging or wrapping around it. Uh, solitary or naked ducts without any significant fibros uh, fibrosis or fibrous response present within the pancreatic fat is also an uh, indicator of pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma. Now also anisonucleosis etc. if seen is very good but uh, however sometimes they can be very deceptively benign also so we have to look at soft pointers uh, like the location of the glands within the pancreatic fat if we get positive lymph nodes the perineural location the architectural organization on low part and most of these contain mucin rather than eosinophilic secretions and there will be rupture of gland with mucin extravasation seen in ductal adenocarcinoma. Nuclear positivity for P53 is highlighted, which may be a helpful marker. It is not seen in chronic pancreatitis. So this is also given in WHO, as I've discussed in the diagrams uh, uh, figures before. Distribution in ductal adenocarcinoma is irregular, haphazard compared to organized lobular distribution in chronic pancreatitis. The location of the glands is very important if it is perineural. If it is intravascular within vascular channels or if there is naked duct in the fat tissue. And here chronic pancreatitis is usually intrapancreatic. There may be fat infiltration with chronic pancreatitis into the pancreatic parenchyma but then it will be associated with fibrous response also. Contours are very irregular with rupture. Usually chronic pancreatitis the ducts are uh, intact. Debris and uh, neutrophils and mucinous debris are the contents in ductal adenocarcinoma, whereas calculi, eosinophilic, thick, proteinaceous plugs are seen in chronic pancreatitis. Cytological features, important ones are pleomorphic nuclei, mitosis, prominent nucleoli. In chronic pancreatitis, usually they are very uniform. However, ductal adenocarcinoma can also be very deceptively bland. And uh, so, therefore, the other extra uh, uh, subtle pointers have to be looked for. So, I have just compiled the features which support diagnosis of adenocarcinoma. First is the growth haphazard as compared to the lobular growth, uh, sorry, lobular arrangement in chronic pancreatitis. Glands next to muscular vessel or vascular invasion, perineural invasion. And if uh, we see nuclear variation with uh, anisocytosis, anisonucleosis of more than 4 is to 1, it is highly indicated because this nuclear variation will lead to a lot of volume change in the nuclear size. So these will be very uh, pleomorphic and uh, anisonucleosis, which is not expected in chronic pancreatitis. So uh, just a bit about uh, genetics of pancreatitis as it is seen in the hereditary pancreatic uh, carcinoma syndrome also. Idiopathic or uh, acute or chronic pancreatitis have certain underlying genetic abnormalities which are associated with defects in the activations of trypsinogen which is the PRSS1, SPINK1 and the chymotrypsin C. Most common mutation is in the PRSS1 
in the codon 122 where uh, arginine is replaced by histidine. Now what it does is it abrogates the ability of trypsin to inactivate itself and enhances the uh, trypsinogen autoactivation. That is trypsinogen keeps forming more of trypsin and also trypsin is not able to abrogate or inactivate itself, sorry. So because of that, there is um, increased amounts of trypsin leading to chronic pancreatitis, uh, multiple episodes of pancreatitis. Pink one gene encodes for a trypsin inhibitor. And if there is loss of uh, function mutation of this uh, SPINK1 gene, then again, there is inability of the uh, trypsin inhibitor to inactivate trypsin leading to increased amount of trypsin within the pancreatic juices. So this uh, again shows the SPINK1 mutation and the pre, uh, other mutations which cause increased amount of trypsin. Uh, cystic fibrosis and CFTR mutation can also be seen where there is decreased amount of chloride and bicarbonate in the exocrine pancreatic juices. Uh, coming to the last entity or uh, second last entity, sorry, autoimmune pancreatitis. There are two types which have now been recognized, the type 1 and the type 2 autoimmune pancreatitis. So I have tabulated the differences between the two and then I'll show uh, figures of each type. Uh, type 1 is usually seen in the elderly, mean age is 70 years, whereas type 2 is uh, seen in middle age, uh, mean age of 50 years. Males are more commonly affected in type 1, where it, there is an equal preponderance in type 2. Presentation is with jaundice in 75% of the cases because type 1 usually presents as a mass lesion in the head of the pancreas and very uh, much it simulates the pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma. It uh, presents like a sausage shape mass lesion, whereas uh, type 2 usually presents with um, acute pancreatitis and can also present with jaundice. Systemic disease, that is systemic involvement is seen in type 1 pancreatitis. Systemic involvement can be seen in the form of uh, sclerosing sialadenitis, primary sclerosing cholangitis, uh, IgG-related uh, lymphoplasmacytic cholecystitis, mediastinal retroperitoneal fibrosis, or also mass lesions in various organs like the kidney, lung, lymph nodes, etc. And this is not a part of systemic disease. It is pancreas limited, type 2. So elevated IgG4 levels are seen in type 1 autoimmune pancreatitis, not seen in type 2 autoimmune pancreatitis. And type 1 is associated with frequent relapses. Although it is steroid responsive, both are steroid responses, but because it is a part of the systemic IgG4 related diseases, it is associated with frequent relapses, whereas relapses are rare in type 2, which is pancreas limited. Histopathology is very classical. In type 1, we have these three main features, storiform fibrosis, obliterative phlebitis, and uh, IgG4 positive plasma cells. More than 10 per hyperfield has a, a good sensitivity and specificity of around 72 and 88%. However, more than 20 per hyperfield has a very high specificity of around 100%, but the sensitivity decreases. Similarly, in type 2 autoimmune pancreatitis, we have periductal inflammation with one or more of these features, ductal or lobular abscesses, which are neutrophil rich, ductal ulcerations forming the gel lesions or the granulocytic epithelial lesions, and IgG4 plasma cells may be present or may not be in type 2. So this is a picture which shows the uh, resection of a uh, uh, pancreatic resection for type 1, which was mistaken for a mass lesion, pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma, where we can see this complete mass lesion with the stenosis of the bile duct and uh, white colored parenchyma because it uh, causes this pseudotumor-like effect because of extensive storiform or pinwheel-like fibrosis, which can be seen here on the low part. We have this classic storiform type of fibrosis, which are these interlacing small spoke wheel type of uh, fibrous bundles. And here we can see this irregular duct or pancreatic duct stellate shape, which is surrounded by lymphoplasmacytic rich inflammatory infiltrate. Again, obliterative uh, phlebitis or venulitis is common in type 1 autoimmune pancreatitis, storiform uh, fibrosis, which I described, and these ducts, which are surrounded by uh, inflammation rich in lymphoplasmacytic cells, if we do the IgG4 uh, immunostain, then uh, more than 10 per hyperfield is quite specific for type 1 autoimmune pancreatitis. 
Type 2 autoimmune pancreatitis is duct centered. There are these ductocentric lesions, mixed inflammatory infiltrate, uh, neutrophils, lot of uh, ductal epi uh, lifting can be seen. And there are these granulocytic epithelial lesions, gel lesions, which are seen, which are classical of these ductal ulcerative uh, type of type 2 autoimmune pancreatitis. So this again shows the duct centric type which are rich in uh, neutrophils infiltrating into the epithelium also causing these granulocytic epithelial lesions. Uh, I will also be discussing uh, paradiodinal pancreatitis as many times these get uh, uh, misdiagnosed clinically as uh, pancreatic carcinomas and we get resection specimens. They occur in the duodenal wall in the pancreatic groove region adjacent to the pancreatic tissue which is in the C loop of the duodenum between the pancreatic tissue and the major and the minor pancreatic ampulla and often they center on the minor ampulla. So this is the most common benign condition which is mistaken for a periampillary carcinoma. It is also called groove pancreatitis as it occurs in the groove where the pancreatic uh, uh, head lies within the uh, C loop of duodenum or cystic dystrophy, there might be cystic degeneration and het, uh, in the heterotopic pancreas. So there are two types, which is the cystic type, which shows multiple cysts ranging in size from 1 to 10 centimeters, and the solid type, which is uh, 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 characterized by marked thickening of the duodenal wall containing small cysts, which are less than 1 centimeter in diameter. So this is a case which we received, and here we can see the CECT abdomen showed this mass lesion in the pancreatic head with irregular stippled calcification also. CECT abdomen, it was grossly bulky, heterogeneous pancreatic head and uncinate process with small cystic necrotic changes, this uh, punctate calcific foci and query, it was uh, the query of the clinician was CA head of pancreas or inflammatory pancreatic head mass. So sometimes even because of the... Uh, kind of obstructive symptoms it causes, it has to be resected, even if clinically it is suspected to be inflammatory. Grossly, we received the specimen and we can see this mass-like lesion, which is extending within the duodenal wall. We can see it extending into the duodenal mucosa. Some cyst-like structures were seen, smaller cyst-like structures, and it was focally gritty also. Microscopically, here we can see, these are the Brunner's glands of the duodenum. And this is the pancreatic parenchyma in conjunction with it, which is going into the wall of the duodenum, reaching almost up to the Brunner's gland. And these are the pancreatic acini. And this again highlights the hypoplastic Brunner's glands. And here we can see the surrounding fibrosis in the pancreatic parenchyma, the acinar atrophy, and the cystic structure, which was lined by attenuated epithelial lining. Some areas showed pancreatic ducts with a lot of uh, nuclear stratification, some amount of nuclear hyperchromasia. So this was reported as groove pancreatitis with low-grade panel. Uh, this is another example of uh, cystic type of groove pancreatitis, which I have taken uh, from the articles that I cited before. And here we can see this kind of cystic degeneration and uh, on microscopy, we can see the corresponding cyst and the pancreatic tissue abutting into the duodenal wall. And this is the solid type of uh, roof pancreatitis, which is characterized by a lot of Brunner's glands hyperplasia with pancreatic tissue within the uh, wall of the duodenum. And here we can see many uh, pancreatic ducts also, which will be proliferating around the minor, uh, sorry, ductal structures will be pan uh, which will be proliferating around the minor ampulla. So, however, they have to be recognized as being benign and not malignant. This is another picture which shows this is the duodenal wall. And here we can actually see this yellowish pancreatic parenchyma within the duodenal wall, almost in the submucosal location, just beneath the mucosa. And that is how we can see it on microscopy. It is abutting right up to the duodenal uh, villus lining. And this is entire pancreatic parenchyma. This is groove pancreatitis. Some areas showing ulceration and uh, sort of inflammatory reactive changes. The ducts can be cystically dilated, show inflammatory atypia. But this classic architectural and this uh, type of uh, arrangement has to, to be recognized, not mistaking them for uh, ductal adenocarcinoma, which is the clinical query. 
So lastly, to summarize the take-home points, pancreatic cystic neoplasms are increasingly recognized entities, IPMN, ITPN, IOPM, and they differ in subtly in morphology as well as molecular genetics. Mostly they are located in the head of the pancreas, in the ancinate process. Mucinous cystic neoplasms situated in the body tail have no communication with pancreatic duct, may erode into the pancreatic duct if very large in size, but classic ovarian stroma is seen in the wall. Serous cystic neoplasms are uh, glycogen uh, rich cuboidal lining epithelium is seen. Uh, PA stain can help, uh, which is uh, diastase uh, sensitive and uh, body tail is the common site. Pseudocyst is not a true cyst, not lined by epithelium, but still it's the most common cystic lesion lined by granulation tissue because it is associated with chronic alcoholic pancreatitis or acute pancreatitis also. And uh, spends are seen in young females and solid veins of cystic degeneration important is beta-catenin, nuclear uh, positivity, discohesive epithelial cell. Prominent pseudopapillary, not true papillae, because these are all the cells which are retained around the vascular structures, whereas the other areas show discohesive cells. So they are pseudopapillae. CD10 and CD99 is positive, dot like. Panins are low grade and high grade. They usually involve the pancreatic ducts, microscopic lesions involving ducts less than 5 millimeter in size. And in pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma versus chronic pancreatitis, most important is the uh, architecture, growth pattern, and the location. Location of the glands next to muscular vessels, perineural location, vascular invasion, and also APC nuclear variation of more than 4 is to 1. Autoimmune pancreatitis type 1, type 2. Type 1 is IgG4 related and systemic uh, 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 disease, whereas type 2 is confined to the pancreas. So important features, as I showed, obliterative phlebitis, storiform fibrosis, IgG4 positive plasma cells in type 1 autoimmune pancreatitis, whereas the granulocytic uh, epithelial lesions or the ductilar abscesses and ductal ulcerations in uh, pancreatic, uh, sorry, type 2 acute uh, autoimmune pancreatitis. Thank you. And before I end, uh, this is uh, Ruth bader who's uh, who was... Uh, uh, one of the associate uh, justice in the Supreme Court of uh, United States, a champion of female equality and gender equality, who passed away just in September 2020 due to pancreatic carcinoma. She's a cancer survivor having diagnosed as colorectal cancer, uh, cancer from 1999. And uh, 2020, she passed away due to complications of metastatic pancreatic carcinoma. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Dr. Mishra. Excellent presentation. Thank you. And I, and I think uh, all that uh, doubts which you had, I don't think so. They don't exist, they exist anymore. Wonderful presentation. Excellently handled. And Thank I think you, you have done wonderful justice to the subject. And uh, uh, let me wait for some questions. If there are any queries, there are a lot of questions on the YouTube, which I will yes, take, uh, uh, first. Let me ask the people here in the Google Meet if they have any questions. I can see uh, your teacher, Dr. Saran, is here. Yes. Uh, if he wants to make a comment, he can unmute his mic and make a comment. Most of my kids excellently. Oh, very oh. nice, which has presented, and uh, everything is uh, quite in detail. Much detail about the uh, mutation changes and everything and about the pictures and very uh, nicely she has pointed out each of the highlighting points that we have to remember because uh, the more you see the more you learn and she has uh, grasped the subject excellently and presented reproduced it very nicely i'm very proud of her thank you excellent thank you, excellent. Thank you sir uh, absolutely right dr saran exactly you you said the right things absolutely this is the way she has done it now uh, let us take some questions from the youtube yes. there are quite a few questions and since dr saran is also there he'll surely help you out <laughs> yes. that's what that's what i was going to say uh, that's good thing to have teachers you know in the audience so if you don't know anything you can always ask your teacher so there's a, a set of questions by dr nabanita das you from assam and the question is uh, Regarding MCN, what type MCN. of stroma? Yeah, MCN, mucinous cyst uh, neoplasm of the pancreas. Uh, what type of stroma is seen in cases of MCN in males? 
is a typical ovarian yeah that is the first part of the question the second part of the question is how do you do a pt stage if invasive focus is present what are the criteria of invasion you have already detailed the criteria of invasion but just these two questions what is the, what is the type of stroma in the males and how do you do the pt staging if invasion is present so mucinous cystic neoplasms are almost exclusively quite uh, common in females but <laughs> the stroma ovarian type of stroma is very characteristic that's why when i uh, showed also the presentation when i was talking about the etiopathogenesis i discussed there is one uh, line of thought which goes towards pluripotent uh, stem cell pancreatic stem cells and the other is embryonic uh, periductal fetal mesenchyme also so besides the ovarian dress these are the two uh, uh, theories which have been conceptualized because it is seen in males also although very rare but uh, we need ovarian stroma to be present to uh, diagnose uh, mucinous uh, cystic neoplasm and for invasive carcinoma yes uh, especially with uh, lesions like ipmns if it is uh, uh, associated with the ipmn not concomitant then we have to this is uh, we have to score it depending on the amount of invasion if it is less than 2 cm if we are seeing multiple foci of invasion but less than 2 cm or 20 mm less than equal to then it is limited invasion otherwise if it is more than 2 cm then it is classified as per the ajcc guidelines which are shown so although less than 2 cm uh, size is divided into t1 a t1 b t1 c but in ipmns and cystic lesions it's usually limited invasions and if more than 2 cm invasion uh, invasive foci then again it is staged accordingly as per the ajcc 8th edition right fine <clears throat> i think that's sufficient the uh, answer is i think quite satisfactory the there's another question by dr nabanita das which is in relation to Uh, solid pseudopapillary neoplasm of the pancreas, in which she wants your opinion. She says, "What is the scenario in which IHC would be useful in solid pseudopapillary neoplasm?" Hmm. So uh, usually, if we have the classic history that it's a young female, uh, adolescent female, eighteen to twenty-five, thirty years. then uh, with this cystic many times it's uh, seen on eus also on endoscopic ultrasound it can be caught now because head uh, head or body tail of the pancreas but uh, if it is seen in an elder individual in a male we have seen uh, in gb pant only with saran sir we have reported uh, cases of spend in male which was showing predominantly solid pattern like i showed a small picture with a solid pattern but again you can see hyaline globules there and the clinical Uh, worry is for neuroendocrine tumor, so there IHC becomes more important. But if we are seeing the classical uh, architecture, pseudo papillary pattern, lot of cystic degeneration, uh, background shows for me histiocytes, cholesterol clefts, and hyaline globules, matrix-like material, nuclear grooving can be seen in both uh, pancreatic uh, uh, neuroendocrine tumors as well as in uh, cystic neoplasm. So it's a subtle feature that we look for in cytology. Uh, nuclear inclusions and nuclear grooving, but uh, it can be seen in neuroendocrine tumors also. So, especially in the correct clinical context, if the patient is elderly with a uh, 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 solid kind of tumor rather than uh, not showing areas of cystic degeneration even after taking multiple sections, grossly solid. So, IHC would be helpful in those situations. In classical morphology, we do not need to put, but usually we do put a beta catenin stain for teaching purposes and also for the record. I think. right there is another question but uh, i i can't uh, i don't know what the name because it comes out as the person is logged in as the guest 85 so the question is what are the key points to diagnose ipmn from mucinous tumor cytologically uh cytologically uh, ipmn and mucinous cystic neoplasm i thought uh, they mean or mucinous adenocarcinomas yeah. i think mucinous cystic neoplasm yeah. so both will show a lot of mucinous contents and ipmns usually if they are associated with the high grade dysplasia mucinous cystic neoplasms are usually very rarely they will go on to uh, as i tabulated in the uh, table they will rarely go on to high grade dysplasia and invasive carcinoma but because whenever they are associated with high grade dysplasia along with the mucin you also see a lot of discohesive atypical epithelial uh, cells which are shed into the mucinous uh, material 
but if it is low grade dysplasia then it is very difficult to uh, diagnose in cytology both will just show abundant mucin without even epithelial cells so okay. uh, then the molecular analysis which i showed it's done in most centers in the us they do the genas and the uh, p53 and the keras mutation genas keras if both comes in the cyst fluid then uh, it is highly suggestive of ipm and not seen in mucinous cystic neoplasms otherwise low grade ipm and from uh, where we do not have any cells uh, we cannot differentiate or yeah, if we have low grade yeah, 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 absolutely perfect that. now there is a, another um, question or maybe a, a lateral comment somebody whom you will smile at dr radhika srinivasan she is there on youtube and she wants to ask you excellent presentation sunana how often do you encounter ipmn in your practice um ipmn uh, uh in ilbs i think i've seen one or two and in gb pant i've seen a few but uh it is increasingly being recognized and resected uh, the figures that i quoted were uh, from uh, the western studies where they see much more ipmns as compared to the indian scenario but i think with the increasing number of resections that are being done uh, probably we'll also see more of these in the indian scenario i think we see more of uh, solid pseudo papillary and the pancreatic pseudo cyst uh, but not so much of ipm and maybe saran sir could answer <laughs> Uh, dr saran it is a difficult thing to uh, say but yes clinician many times uh, uh, write this diagnosis but many times these are just the mucinous uh, uh, cystic adenocarcinoma because uh, in the multiple section we can uh, always find uh, uh, that they have a, uh, a cystic mucin and the frank uh, adenocarcinoma cells but Uh, clinician many times are many times uh, actually <laughs> are emphasizing that nah, this is the classical IPM and they are thinking. So uh, main doctor, uh, I, in fact, uh, one of the uh, I clearly remember the clinic. My clinician has uh, shown me endoscopic picture that the from uh, these main ampullary duct a lot of mucin were uh, pulsatile coming out of it. But uh, I could not prove it. Uh, it was just a chronic pancreatitis having cystic things. Uh, so clinical diagnosis is uh, too much histopathological whenever the resection comes i have uh, rarely uh, diagnosed it that is my experience what i know yeah, yeah right. right now there are there is another question here in the chat box in the google meet by Pro dr professor pranab kumar bhattacharya he is a very famous pathologist in calcutta what is the role of dendritic cells in pancreatic carcinoma I think I'll have to read that up a bit. I have a next lecture coming up, so probably I can answer there. But yes, yeah, sure, uh, sure. the micro environment and the tumor micro environment, epithelial mesenchymal trans uh, transition is quite well uh, known in pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma. So I think it has something to do with that, the EMT in pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma. But I have to read that up a bit better about the role of dendritic cells. He also has another question: role of FLT3 ligand in pancreatic carcinoma. So these are all epigenetic mutations which are seen. Uh, the uh, FLT3 MLL mutations and that leads to hypomethylation. So these are uh, theoretical. I don't know. We we don't really test for these mutations so much. But uh, whenever there is epigenetic mutations, there'll be hypomethylation of all the uh, good genes, suppressor genes, and the, uh, there'll be hyper global hypomethylation of the sorry the uh, uh, oncogenes and hypermethylation of the. and the promoter su suppression of the uh, various uh, uh, tumor suppressor genes uh, professor panov is here in the google meet so he can take up he can he can give a comment on the role of dendritic cells in pancreatic carcinoma so you can unmute and, and give your comment there what is your experience with regard to dendritic cells in pancreatic carcinoma he has no comments i think uh, i think uh, we are done for the day excellent presentation dr sunana misra very well done and uh, uh, credit not to you and to your teachers wonderfully presented uh, thank you everybody for joining in and thank you, uh, thank you. bye bye good night take care god bless you bye bye take thank care. you sir. good night bye.
Thank you. Please share the PDF so that yes, we can sir, see. Yeah. Thank you I so much. Bye-bye. Thank you, sir. Bye, sir.